Hello there, storytellers. Welcome back to this new episode of Crossroads, the storyteller's journey. Today, we have a musician from Boise, Idaho on the podcast, an alternative rocker that started a band with his brother. It's called Milo Bybee. They're from Boise, Idaho, and I'm really excited to for you to just hear about their journey, for you to hear about the challenges that they faced, especially through COVID. I'm sure you faced some challenges during that time, as we all did, and if you don't remember COVID, I'm not sure where you were, but it was kind of a big deal and still is. Uh, but I hope that you are doing well. I hope that you're enjoying life and I hope that you can enjoy this podcast. Share it with a friend, share it with someone you love. And if you enjoy it, please feel free to leave a review. Even if it's not good, I want to hear from you. I want, I want that feedback. You know what I mean? Anyways, I hope that you have a great day. Listen to this podcast, share it with someone you love. Again, we have Milo Bybee on the podcast, Tyler Schlagenhaut from Boise, Idaho. So please enjoy. And here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, storytellers from around the world, wherever you might be listening in from um, here on the next episode of Crossroads, the storyteller's journey, we have a musician, a singer and guitarist um, in a band based out of Idaho. Um, they're called Milo Bybee and they got started recently. We're excited to, to be hearing from Tyler Schlagenhauf today. Um, a band that he started with his brothers and when you know we're just gonna dive into it um into it you know f head first as they like to say so how you doing today tyler how's how's it going how's life i'm doing well donovan thanks so much life's life's going good just uh playing some music enjoying the outdoors where uh my my wife and i were pretty avid avid campers and it's a uh, camping season and so we've been hitting the road a couple of times and yeah yeah i'm getting out there and, and enjoying Sweet. the weather and the in the outdoors so yeah do you guys have a camper well. or anything we do actually we have a uh we have a conversion camper van um and so oh. it's a it's a van that was kind of gutted and you know we got a kitchenette in there oh yeah uh, oh yeah storage yeah we have a and it's one that's got like the pop top so the top goes up about another three feet or so um and then there's a little loft that's up there and uh wow yeah, she and i did you guys do it all our, yourself uh no we didn't we actually purchased it like that Oh, sweet. Um, we'd, nice. Yeah, we would kind of looked into getting something like that and maybe doing it ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. But then we just kind of decided once this one came available and we saw it, we'd rather kind of hit the road, you know, in yeah. it rather than kind of oh, spend yeah. a summer building it out. And so it worked sure. out pretty well. Cool, man. That's That sounds like the dream. Um, my parents are trying to do that similar thing. My sister is, she was all about the van life type of thing. So, um, sounds yeah. like you're having a lot of fun out there. Um, do you like to do most of your traveling in Idaho? Or do you cross, you know, States? Where, where do you like to go? Yeah, we'll cross States a lot. We go to Utah quite a, quite a bit. We go to Moab, um, a lot. My wife's from Oregon, so we'll go over to Oregon all the time. We go Sweet. to the Oregon coast at least every year, um, have some family in Portland. So we, we're definitely around that area a lot. Yeah. Um, done some trips to California and Washington, and sure. so yeah, kind of all kind of all over the Pacific Northwest at least so far. Cool. Yeah, as much as I'd love to talk about the travel life and the van life, um, let's get into Milo Bybee, um, a great yeah. alt rock. I mean, plenty of different influences you can tell. You know, influenced uh, Milo Bybee, um, but sure. I, I've. I would say that it's pretty safe to say that you guys are an alt rock band that kind of just does whatever comes to you. Um, I was just wondering, I mean, the first thing I like to ask my guests is, um, what does, because this is a podcast about storytelling, what is, what does storytelling mean to you and how do you implement the stories that you're trying to tell through, through your music, through that alternative rock? Yeah, I think one of the things about music is that you know, everyone has a different story, right? And even yeah. though I write a song that's telling a story, like everybody who's listening to it and hearing it might interpret it their own way, which I think is the beauty, beauty of music. And mm. so storytelling is a big part of, you know, what we do, you know, and, and how we kind of kind of portray our art. You know, when I go to write lyrics to a melody, um, I'm usually trying to tell a story from a perspective of either something I've personally experienced Mm. Um, but also things that I haven't personally experienced and maybe my interpretation of something that others might experience, okay. um, to, to do just that, to tell, to tell that story. And, and like I said, my favorite thing about it is just really, once you're able to play that song for somebody, whether it be live or they're able to hear your tracks, you know, on Spotify or wherever, um, kind of how, how, you know, what it means to them. And you know, we all listen to music and we all listen to certain bands and songs because you know we like the song and it, and it yeah. usually 
you know, resonates with us in a certain way. And so that's, that's really what I appreciate um, um, about not only writing music, but being a musician and then also listening to other people's music. Yeah, it's definitely, there's definitely so much beauty in the interpretation of art and, and, and music and everything that comes when yeah. it comes to storytelling, um, which is one of the things I love because the, ex- the extension of your pieces of work um, is, is an art form in itself. And it's just really cool because, you know, you got your influence from, I mean, I'm sure plenty of different bands and plenty of different genres um, and people, but what it comes down to is that it created your sound and it created Milo Bybee. Um, so how did you guys land on that name? Where did it come from? Um, it's, it's just a, it's a very unique name. And obviously you guys are the Schlagenhauf brothers and like, I mean, I don't see the correlation. So, so, so where did that come from, man? (laughs) Yeah. So it's a really funny story. Uh, you know, we were going through that stage that, you know, I'm sure most fans do where you're, you know, you come up with, a hundred different band names, you know, 90% of them you don't really like and aren't, Mm -hmm. you know, the one you want to go with. And, um, we actually, uh, got to the point where we were playing pretty often and practicing together where we were able to get some songs together really quickly, um, that we wanted to go record. And so we decided to go record, not having a band name. And, Mm -hmm. and of course, once you, once you go into record, they, the engineer asks you first off, like, what's your band name? you know, obvious yeah. question. Yeah. And we didn't have one at that time. And we had been throwing around, you know, several different random names and it just so happened like a couple of weeks or so before we went to record, um, there was like a newspaper article that either my brother or I became aware of that was talking about the person who invented the finger steak, who is from Idaho. Okay. Um, which I didn't know that I didn't know, you know, he was, he was from here and his name was Milo Bybee. And we thought it had a really funny ring to it, you know, not necessarily thinking of it for a band name. But uh, when we got asked, you know, put on the spot when we're going to record, like, what's your band name? My brother just threw out there Milo Bybee and it just (laughs) it just kind of just stuck stuck from there. Yeah, Yeah, which is kind of a funny story. And uh, we, you know, it's we love to tell that story, especially when we're playing in Idaho, because Mm. for the most part, people don't know that the finger steak was invented here. Nor do many people, I realize lately, outside of Idaho, know what a finger steak is. Yeah, I was um, actually going to ask you because I I'm from Florida. I don't know what that yeah. is. Is is it like a it's an Idahoan thing or whatever? I don't. It apparently is. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know that, but apparently it is, and it's it's essentially like a, a, a chicken finger, but it's steak. You know, deep fried. Oh. S- steak fingers, okay. I guess. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Once you explain it, you're like finger steak, chicken fingers. <laughs> right. It's the same thing. Right. Um, yeah. My, like, why wouldn't they call it steak fingers? Cause then they would yeah. know it's like chicken fingers. Anyways, that's right. a whole nother right. conversation it to is. have um, with. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's awesome though. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's always nice to have a story like that. Like rather than just say, I mean, it's great when you're, when you just come up with something that is, that sounds good and that you guys all like and vibe with. Um, but it's even better when the, when the story comes from something like that, where you guys just right. all, it's just like a, you know, oh yeah, we're Milo Bobby and you guys all laugh about it. And then you're like, no, we're actually Milo Bobby. That's who yeah, we are. Right. <laughs> it's, yeah, right. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's super cool though. How do, how do yeah. the people of Idaho respond to that sort of thing when you guys say, yeah, you, Milo Bobby, the guy who invented the finger steak, yeah. that's who we are. You know, what, what kind of, what does that look like? You know, it's been a mis- mixed reaction from, you know, when you tell that to people like people that just don't really care about that. Yeah. 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 Sure. <laughs> um, sure. To people who, to people who didn't know, like about that also, which is also like kind of a, huh, you know, I didn't, that's interesting. I didn't know. Well, now I want to try it. I was going to say, if you're ever over here, you definitely have to try them. Um, But it's, yeah, it's usually mixed reactions when it, when it comes up. And uh, and surprisingly, we don't get asked about our band name as often as I anticipated that you kind of would, especially when you have a name that definitely doesn't mean Mm -hmm. anything to anyone. Yeah. Um, But uh, yeah, it's always, always a mixed reaction. Maybe it's just because everybody knows who Milo Bobby is and they're like, no, we don't need to ask. We just know. (laughs) It could be. It could be. (laughs) Well, and it's, it's funny too, because there's, I've had people that um, like a lot of my, in my day job, a lot of my colleagues live on the East coast. Okay. And I I actually had a colleague one time who he had since retired from the company and he had just started listening to us through, you know, found us through Facebook or Instagram or whatever and listening to our, our, our tracks and he he he's on like a cross country tour on his motorcycle like he was like last year and he sent me a 
he sent me a picture of a finger steak on a menu item on a menu in like the Midwest somewhere. Okay. And it was the finger steaks and next to it it said Milo Bybee's recipe, uh, which which we oh. thought was was really funny because he was making that connection. I didn't know he even listened to our music first off, and then second off, getting this from him. Um, yeah. I thought it was really funny. So. That's yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> it's making I mean, waves. <laughs> sure, absolutely, yeah. The finger steak is is expanding, and Milo Bobby's right. name is now her, the world. The name heard around the world. Um, that's right. That's that's a that's a great story. I love it. Um, so I know that you guys started, or like you you were really grinding during the pandemic. Um, like you, did you guys get together? You know, at the beginning of the pandemic or mid pandemic or before or like how, what did that look like? Yeah, it was pretty much um, right before the pandemic. You know, when okay. when we first started, um, we'd mentioned my you know my brother Wes is in the band, plays bass, mm-hmm. and so obviously we obviously we have a long relationship. Um, and then when we first started, it was our brother in law that was playing drums for us. He's yeah, married yeah. to our sister, and um, so obviously we all knew each other, and we all played. It just so happened we played um, different instruments. And actually, my brother didn't play bass until he joined our band. He played um guitar he's an avid guitar player but was able to make that transition and then you know just went into it with real no real expectations we had a we have a a dedicated space here that became available to us before we were a band to like be a practice space and then we just all kind of got together like why don't we take advantage of this and just jam around and yeah see what comes of it and again going into it with no expectations and and then of course you know shortly after that the pandemic hit and so nobody's out playing shows or, or, or anything like that. And so that gave us some ample time just to practice, you know, and, and play and jam with one another and yeah, heck um, yeah. get used to everyone's styles. And because leading up to that, none of us, including my brother and I had never played before we had, my brother and I had lived in different States for a long time. So okay. I lived in Alaska for a long time, North Dakota for a long time. He lived in California for a long time. My brother-in-law, who was playing drums at the time, he's always um, been here. But then this was kind of the first time we were all back in that same area. And then, um, yeah, just to start, just, just decided to start, start, uh, start up right before uh, that pandemic hit. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's nice that you had that time just to kind of, you know, get build that chemistry. Obviously, you and your brother go way back to the beginning. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. but building that chemistry and really you know, knowing what your sound is like, um, prior to releasing anything or playing any shows, um, it can definitely, you know, that intimate, like private space where you guys can just mess around and come up with stuff on your own. It's, it's very valuable. A lot of other bands don't really get that time They're They might be too busy grinding, you know, touring, um, like small tours or going to bars, playing at bars, wherever it might be. But it's nice that you guys are able to build that chemistry, um, privately and, come up with come up with some some heat to be honest your your um ep that you guys released last year is that is that one that you guys worked on during the pandemic and then released last year or um or when did that one come out yeah so that was the one where we we were able to get those five songs together you know fairly quickly and get them polished enough to their their where we liked them um and then yeah we went in in the middle of a pandemic to actually record those at a local studio here okay and then release those yeah, last year released that EP last year. Yeah, um, and we just did we just did a self release with that. Um, okay, and just put it up on on all the channels that you can. Yeah, um, your your Spotify's and Apple Music's and all that. Um, sure. And then yeah, just started playing some shows, you know, around here, and then um, uh, you know, alongside that, um, started writing some more songs. Um, and when we went to when we went in to record the EP, we chose five songs. We actually had more than five songs at that time. Okay. Um, but just decided to kind of start with. With, since that was our first thing we were putting out there, our first exposure, um, we were just choosing kind of the, the ones that we felt the most comfortable with. Yeah. Um, and went in and recorded that. And yeah, just did kind of a, a again, a self release with that. And um, been just, uh, you know, kind of promoting it ever since. And we were, we're at the point where we're looking to get back in the studio later on this year to record either That's... another EP or even another, or even a full length album. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, it's, I mean, definitely getting back out there in the studio is probably going to be an awesome time. And just like, I don't know, it'll, it'll just be sick. Um, <laughs> I'm excited yeah, for you guys for... to get back in there. And, um, have you got, have y'all been, I mean, writing anything just out outside of the studio, I'm hoping, or, you know, getting a chance to play around. Yeah, absolutely. We, 
we just played, um, there's a big festival that's here, um, that we just played this last weekend. That was a lot of fun. It was okay. extremely, extremely hot outside, but that was a lot of fun. That, that was our first show in a couple of months. We have another big festival called Shreveport here that was back in March that we played. Um, okay. and this was really our first kind of show since that. Um, and it, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, you know, and we're in a stage right now where we are practicing a lot. I'm writing a lot of stuff. You know, I have a lot of content that, that we've played as a band, but then I also have a lot of content that I haven't even brought forth to the band yet. So yeah, really looking forward to getting back on kind of a regular practicing schedule. Uh, several of us or all of us within the band have been doing a lot of traveling recently just for you know, different purposes. And uh -huh. so we haven't been able to be on a super solid practice schedule right now, but you know, what's okay. nice too, what's nice too also in that meantime is, um, you know, we, we recently have signed with a label. Yeah. I was going to uh, ask about that. Yeah. We recently signed with a label called ZMI Arcadia outside of Atlanta. Okay. And what we're doing is we're taking that EP that we created. We're having it remastered at Abbey road in London and then working on a national uh, distribution for that EP. Nice. Um, so so kind of scaling it from, you know, that self-release that we yeah. did, um, yeah. which, you know, our channels that we have and, and our and our connections, you know, only go so far, um, especially as a new band. Um, sure. But, but yeah, we were, we were able to get our stuff in front of them. And, yeah, so we're working on that right now. That's going to be re-released in August um, mm -hmm. to have that – um, you know, see what, see what happens with that. And then in that meantime, again, just be kind of prepping for that next, that next album. Yeah, that's awesome. So, um, your experience with, um, ZMI Arcadia, uh, when, first of all, when did you guys sign? And also, um, how has, how has that either encouraged you, um, or just kind of made you pivot your, your plan? Um, cause now that you're remastering this track, uh, obviously that's gonna, I mean, maybe you weren't planning on doing that before you signed with ZMI and now it's here and you're like, Oh, let's do this. Um, but how, how has that journey from independent to signing with this record label just either may not change your sound, but just change your strategy as an, as an artist and as a band? Yeah. So a couple of things I'll say about that, you know, as a musician, you know, in this space, I mean, that's always what you're looking at, right. As a, as yeah. a band, like what, what's that next level for you? Are you doing it just for fun? Which is great. Yeah. I mean, a lot of musicians are doing it just for fun, you know, and on yeah. the weekends and whatnot, which is kind of the intention that we went into it with. And, mm -hmm. you know, that, but, but as a musician, that's always like the hope, like somebody hears it, somebody likes it, somebody that has some, you know, some oomph behind them um, is able yeah. to kind of get a hold of them. And so, you know, this has been an ongoing process, meaning I've been working with them before we officially signed for probably, oh geez, seven months or so. I mean, we started a conversation okay. Um, a lot, quite, quite a while ago. And it's been one of those things too, like trying to navigate this space as an independent musician is extremely challenging because sure. nowadays what you find is you have anyone coming out of the woodwork, like saying, Hey, we can do this for you, this for you, this for you, but Hey, you're going to pay us this much up front. You know, you're having mm -hmm. all this stuff that's, that's kind of, that's kind of oversaturating the space with those yeah. types of organization, you know, so anyway, my point is it's really hard to navigate this space as an independent musician. So we were doing our due diligence, you know, throughout these months, like, you know, are these people that we want to work with, you know, not knowing anything about them, you know, what, what kind of channels do they just dis distribute in? You know, mm -hmm. who are they working with? Where are they out of? What about other artists who work with them? Yeah. Um, and all in all, I mean, we officially signed, gosh, just maybe not even a month ago. Um, so it's pretty new, but it's, yeah. it's been, it's been nothing but great so far. You know, I've worked with, with, um, a uh, couple of guys over there that I've been in conversation with for, for all of those seven months and just really, really great guys to work with. They're really musician focused, um, and, and musician centered. They really listen to kind of what we see for the band rather than, you know, just jumping on the bandwagon and doing whatever a label wants you to yeah. do. It's it's really them listening to our ideas, our ideas, knowing where our band's coming from, knowing where we want to go, um, and really just helping to foster kind of our wants and needs rather than trying to push something on us that doesn't necessarily fit in with where we see ourselves as a band. And so that's why right now, you know, mm -hmm. we wanted to start with let's, you know, those who who are a lot better at this than I 
you know, let's work with them to see how we can scale the songs that we're super proud of that we've already put out there, um, you know, to a much larger level, to a national level. Yeah. Um, while we're then also partnering to, to, to be able to record in the future. So it's been, it's been super, super great so far. Um, you know, and it's, I've been in, in other bands before, um, you know, and I was, I was in a band a long time ago where we were starting to get a little bit of attention, you know, just from, again, mm-hmm. some, some of those people who have some more means to be able to scale what you're doing. And, yeah. um, it, it just seems like even from, we never ended up signing or anything, but it just seems like then to now this space has just changed so much, obviously with digital distribution with your Spotify, with mm-hmm. your Apple music, like yeah. you can, you can do that self release, you know, as an independent artist, artist, and you can do all of those things. Mm-hmm. It just so happened that, you know, this, this was kind of the right choice for us as a band right now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we're just, we're really ex- excited to see where this relationship goes. Cool. Yeah. That's, that's, um, that's really, it's a really cool place to be in because you have like confidence that they're going to, you know, help you just, scale your sound and make it better rather than change it. Um, and I think that the route of, I mean, taking, you know, this is some songs we're really proud of. Let's just remaster them so that they can be enjoyed to their fullest, fullest extent and enjoyed to, you know, how we wanted them to be enjoyed by people. So yeah, I think that that's a, that's a great place to start. Um, and I'm excited to, I mean, see how that relationship helps you guys, helps you guys not both, not, not only, um, continue to produce the music that you love, um, and the music that you're writing, but also how it helps you guys scale as a band. And, um, I mean, get you even closer to that dream of, of making music your day job. Cause I know, you know, before we started recording, we were talking a little bit about that and it's always the dream to, to be doing what you love in terms of like your craft, your art being like being your job. And, um, yeah. I, everybody wants to get there and it's just a matter of how badly you want it and how you're going to get there because at this point you you can get there through TikTok, through Instagram, yeah. through through a record deal, through all of them. I mean, you, there's there's multiple yeah. ways that you can grow your your brand and grow outside of your organic following um and Definitely. I think that the way that you guys have the way that you guys have signed and and just committed to that and um you know, the strategy that you guys are taking is, is really good and it's really cool to see. Yeah, it is. You know, it's, it's funny too, because, you know, myself as a musician, you know, I've, I've played and wrote my own stuff, you know, for a long time, some mm-hmm. of it being solo, some of it being in a band. Yeah. Um, and one of the big joys for me, um, in it all is, well, a, I love playing live shows, like playing live is, it, you know, nothing really beats it, but yeah, hear, hearing somebody, that knows what they're doing as far as from a recording and engineering standpoint. Uh-huh. Um, like we recorded our e- EP at a local place here called the tonic room and they did a phenomenal job. Yeah, um, no, it sounds great. You know, it sounds great. If, if it wasn't for the opportunity to have it remastered at Abbey road, you know, we probably wouldn't have it remastered, mm-hmm. but when you get the opportunity to have something mastered at Abbey road, you kind of jump at it. <laughs> yeah. And so, so we're having it, you know, anyway, back to my point, one of my original, one of my initial things that I really enjoy as a musician is just hearing those songs that I originally wrote, you know, who knows where, yeah. um, actually get to the point where not only is it with a band and with other instrumentalists, mm-hmm. but then it comes to fruition in the form of a mastered copy. Like just even hearing that, regardless of that anyone else ever heard those, mm-hmm. that is just such a big like moment for me. Yeah. Just hearing, hearing, where they started from to where they are now Mm -hmm. and a final stage is just, it's just amazing. And, you know, a lot of people now are becoming their own, you know, recording engineers and they can, you know, they can sit with the pro tools and they can sit with your logics and, and do, and produce some really, really, really amazing, just DIY content, you know, doing it out of their home studios. I unfortunately am not that person. And so hearing, hearing those songs in their mixed and mastered state is just, that's such an accomplishment for me in itself. Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, I'm glad that you, that you feel accomplished in doing that. Um, because for a lot of people, it takes like seeing like just the numbers, um, and seeing the money and I mean, seeing those, those things that do, they do encourage you, you know, like you, Mm -hmm. if you see a check that like, 
you wouldn't have otherwise gotten from just doing music. You're like, oh snap, like this, this is legit. Like this can be what I do. Um, I mean now with streaming, yeah. you know, not getting much off of, of a single stream is, you know, a little bit different and it's discouraging sure. and sometimes, but, but yeah, just seeing that, that it's, it hasn't really been the numbers necessarily that's, that's helped you grow. And that's like, help that, you know, that fuel, that fire, that encouragement, um, is really good to mm-hmm. see. But I mean, you guys are in a great place as a band. Um, I know that you're looking for, um, a new drummer. You're, you're getting ready to try and hire a new one. Um, but yeah. I mean, what have, what has the biggest obstacle been so far in Milo Bybee's lifetime? I think for me, I mean, you kind of just alluded to it a little bit, you know, we, we had our, our long-term drummer, um, who is our brother-in-law that we work super well with cause we know him super well. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, it, it just came to the point where it wasn't a great fit for him. He had some ongoing injuries and things yeah. like that. And, um, just, you know, other, other things that, that are 1 million percent understandable, you know, why, yeah. why, why a band couldn't sustain. Um, but so that's been one of the things just getting consistent members and getting on a, or a consistent drummer and getting on a consistent practicing schedule. But I think mm. that we're, we're to that point now we've been picking up a couple of fill-ins for the last couple of shows who have yeah. both been unreal and amazing. Um, we lucked out in both cases, able to find some drummers who are, are, are masters at their, their craft. And we're able to, you know, pick our tracks up pretty quickly. So, yeah. uh, you know, above and be, above, above and beyond that, I think the, the biggest hurdle I would say for us, especially as somebody who was trying to do all of this on my own Mm -hmm. was trying to be able to get it in front of people enough to play beyond just your every week local show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like like that. And that's, that's sometimes a, a, um, a very hard hurdle to cross. Obviously it depends on where you live, like what your demographics are. Do you have a lot of, you know, kind of incubator, incubator venues that you can play in? Mm-hmm. I think that's been the largest hurdle is to, you know, and a, and a side note from that too, you know, we play in a genre that like that alt rock genre that, you know, used to be really popular. Um, yeah. But now it's kind of moving in a direction of other genres, but you mm-hmm. know, it's kind of still got those undertones. that's kind of starting yeah. to get popular again. And so yeah. I think that's also maybe another hurdle, just kind of the, the, the popularity of the genre and the demand for it. Um, because, you know, as a, as a musician, as someone who plays live, like, your ultimate goal is to, to, to bring in as many people as possible and have those people enjoy your music. Yeah. Um, and you know, we're lucky enough that, that Boise's, you know, doing a lot of things to really put Boise on the map as far as kind of a music incubator, have a lot of really mm-hmm. big bands here, have a big, you know, some big festivals that go on here. Sure. Um, and so I would just, yeah, I would just go back to say, you know, one of those other larger hurdles is just being able to independently do enough to get your stuff scaled to a point where people do say, Hey, I do know who your band is, or I would love to come see you, you know, even in your local, local spot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they, they find themselves happy with just the playing at a, a show every, each weekend. Um, cause maybe, maybe they're happy with their day job and they're like, I'm, I'm good with where I'm at now. I, I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, do this because it keeps me alive and it keeps me, you know, encouraged right. and passionate in life in general, not only just like with what they're doing with their art, but a lot of people are just like, you know, I'm happy, you know, playing two gigs a weekend or a gig a weekend at a bar because I'm a yeah. regular there and I know the regulars there. Um, and it's great, you know, uh, those, those people, you know, they're, they're doing what they love and you have to commend them for that. Cause it's, it's hard getting people to believe sure. in you and especially when you're just starting yeah. out. Um, and especially starting out during a pandemic, um, it's a lot of people were trying to, you know, do their side hustles during the pandemic and see what worked and uh, increase the time they spent doing their hobbies. Um, and yeah. obviously seems like you guys just took that and ran with it and decided to, to create this, this great alt rock band, Milo Bybee. Um, and that's just awesome yeah. to see. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's, it's been you know, it's been a lot of fun. And like I said, in the beginning, like we went into it with really no intentions. And so even the fact that there are, you know, labels and, you know, people that are reaching out saying, Hey, I'm listening to your music, like love yeah. it. Like people that we don't know, people that we do know. Um, and, and again, even people at like the record label level, um, it's just, I mean, that's beyond anything we, we, we ever really thought, you know, and as a musician myself, like, like to your point, 
if none of that had ever happened, I'd still be playing music, right? I'd be yeah. playing it for myself. I'd be playing it for my wife and dog, probably <laughs> <laughs> just, just them, but, but at least playing it in some sense, because I don't think you get into playing music for the sole purpose of thinking like you're going to come out of it, you know, being able to sustain, yeah, you know, no. all y your income with, with, with just playing music. You don't get into it for that, but obviously that's always something that if there's an opportunity there, that's pretty amazing. Um, and speaks to a, speaks a lot to the craft. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I know that, and I can speak for, you know, my brother as well. Like we'd be playing it regardless of if we had gotten some of these opportunities. Sure. That's, I mean, that's good. Cause it's, I mean, that just means that it's your passion. That's really been keeping you yeah. guys going. Um, and like I said earlier, a lot of people are chasing the numbers and want for the numbers to be in a particular place so that they feel encouraged to continue. And I mean, part of the reason why I started this podcast and this brand was because I wanted for people to start seeing those numbers so that they didn't give up. Um, cause yeah. it is a part of the battle and you know, you can still yeah. be passionate and not be getting the numbers that you like want to get. And right. I mean, it's, it's just a thing. And I just, I want to help people try to try to see that. And I mean, help my, people, you know, see Milo Bybee and, and listen to that. So, so yeah, man, that's, that's awesome. Um, it's, it's just great to see you rocking, you know, um, you rocking yeah, with the alt rock. Uh, and like I said earlier, it's kind of your genre is got a ton of different influences. Um, now it's, sure. you know, it's about the time when I'd, I'd love to hear about where that came from. Um, and just, yeah. I mean, has it been something that you've always been attracted to? Like the storytelling aspect of music, has it been something that you've been attracted to like since a young age or did it start coming, um, like later in life? Um, like when did, when did you have that sense where you were like, man, I want to tell my story through music or tell a yeah. story through music? Yeah. You know, I mean, we grew up, you know, with the music in the household a lot, you know, our, our, both of our parents, and we listened to all sorts of different artists growing up. And I think at that time, like I'm, I was listening to it for, you know, for the melody, for just something that, you know, was, was pleasing to my ear that I like to hear. It wasn't necessarily listening and paying much attention to the lyrics um, yeah. and kind of the story that the artist was telling. I mm. definitely started to focus more on that. Actually, I was, I would, it's an interesting question. I don't think I've ever been asked that, but as I reflect on it, I would think that I started paying more attention to the story when I started to get way more invested into the artists, which was probably, hmm. you know, I'm a, I'm a nineties kid, you know? And so I was the punk genres. I was the yeah. alt rock genres and you yeah. know, even a little bit of that hardcore genre at the end there. But I think I really started to get and like invest more into what a musician is about and where they're coming from. Like, later high school okay. um, and then probably even early college because I always played music. Um, mm -hmm. Like I always played the guitar, but I was never in any band or anything until college. Yeah. Um, and so that's when I really started to kind of hone in on my own craft, which uh -huh. adversely allowed me to kind of pay more attention to some of those artists that I was listening to and sure. how they were crafting songs, you know, how they were telling that story, what story were they telling um, and you know, I, I, I started to get really into, you know, kind of your, your, your folk rock genres. It was a little bit softer than most of the stuff I was playing, mm -hmm. but I just felt like, I felt like the folk rock genre kind of aligned to the stories I was trying to tell a little bit better, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, but that I've since then done putting to our, you know, music, which is a little bit more of an alt rock kind of genre. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, you know, all of the stuff that I write now in storytelling is not all from personal experience. And it's even changed over time, like through the progression of developing a song. Like, you know, we have one song that's called End of the War. Like where that song has started to where it is now is like completely different. Like yeah. now it's about, you know, it all the all the negative things, you know, that, that happen in our world somewhere is rooted in like us doing it to ourselves, you know, as humans and, and, sure. and us, us causing that to happen, which is not at all where that song started. <laughs> um, yeah. but, it, but it's, it's my own journey as well. Like along, you know, writing uh, throughout writing a song. 
Mm. Um, like I don't typically sit down to say, okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write a song about this. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, here's a catchy melody. Here's, you know, a, a lyrical pattern that pops into my head. Like how can we branch off this and what are we trying to say by this? So mm. back to your original question, I would say probably, yeah, around, around probably late high school, early college is when I really started paying attention to the story of mm. different artists. Yeah, I was I was someone that when I I mean I've always loved music and I've always listened to music, um, but I've always been someone that's been more attracted to like the melody of a song than the lyrics, and yeah. so whenever I'm listening to an album for the first time, a lot of times my ears just going straight to the the music, the melody, um, you know, the the actual like theory behind it rather than the lyrics, um, right. but. Because whenever I write music, that's what I usually start with. I usually like think of a, a melody. And I'm like, oh, cool. Like, let's put some lyrics to this. Um, yeah. So that's usually like my process. Um, but did you start writing music before high school? I did. Yeah. So I started playing guitar probably, let's see, I was 14 maybe. Um, okay. And, you know, I never really took any formal lessons or anything like that. Just kind mm -hmm. of play by play by ear and sure yeah i would start to i would start to write my own little melodies and and things and then yeah start to kind of write some lyrics and and whatnot to put over the top of them nothing like i don't even think i even wrote anything down at that stage it was just uh -huh. kind of you know mem memory and yeah and whatnot so yeah i i definitely started doing that, that at a young age you know i think the first song that i ever actually officially wrote um you know from start to finish like full-on song you know with verses and chorus and whatnot it was probably my junior year of high school, um, which then I ended up going off to college, you know, two years later. And that was that first year um, I was in my first band ever um, okay. and then was able to bring that song into that band um, and uh, start start playing some of those um, that I some of those melodies, even if they didn't have lyrics that I had written yeah. before, you know, I was able to kind of incorporate into some of those bands which yeah. is really cool again to kind of see it come to come to fruition but uh yeah, yeah I, I i always kind of started to dabble in that back in the in the middle school days how how did it feel seeing those those pieces that you had written like come to life in a in a band like in a full band it's pretty incredible you know i mentioned before like from when a, the inception of a song to where it ends is to me just crazy because you mm. know speaking from my from the college bands you know those were more of like we're going to go out there and play in front of people, regardless of how it sounds like we just love playing. You know, we were in a little DIY venue that we had there and I went yeah. to a really small school in North Dakota. And there was one, one little DIY venue there. that was amazing. And everybody was there for the same reason, like listen to music, no matter how bad it was, how loud mm -hmm. it was, how good it was. It didn't matter. The genre, they were just there for that purpose, which is amazing. That's what's amazing about being a musician and, and being in that community. Yeah. Um, but I would say more so with this band, with Milo, like hearing songs that I've written, some of them five, ten years ago, to now get to the point where a bass is in it and drums are in it and get it to the point where it's completed. Like like I said before, like some of them ended up in a completely different spot than where they started, which mm -hmm. I think is just it's it's amazing to see that transformation. You know, how yeah. something comes comes to life. You know, sometimes when you're working through something, it doesn't sound like what you even want it to sound like. And so you revisit it, you go back to it until it gets to a point where you, you know, you do like that sound. And that's what I appreciate also about, you know, the band and everyone brings their own musical influences, right? Like my mm -hmm. brother and I don't even have the same musical influences. We grew up with very similar ones. Um, but then, you know, kind of started to really branch out in our own ways. Yeah. Um, you know, our, our original drummer too, our brother-in-law Koji, he, you know, he came from like the, the garage punk, you know, kind of background, like the really fast drum beats on a, you know, for, for a punk beat. And yeah. that wasn't anything where I was really used to playing. And so he was able to incorporate that a lot. You can hear that a lot in our, yeah, yeah. Our I heard EP, it in, you know, time, yeah. Which, time which and signature changes. And yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a song spit, that, um, spits one of them that yeah, yeah. starts slow and goes faster. Yeah. So, was... so those influences were able to come into the songs, which is really cool to see. Yeah. But, yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's a Frankenstein. Like you, you all have your own influences, and you just you know right. you all put it together to to create something. Um, to create Milo Bobby, to create some nice steak yeah. fingers, um, finger That's steaks. Right. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think the song was "End of the War," which um, oh, yeah. you know, at the end of that one, it just kind of goes hard. Um, yeah, I, I'm not. There at the end. Yeah, it's. I'm not really too much of a. 
a listener of rock. I, I don't know. I like know a lot of the classic rock songs, you know, a lot of the Beatles sure. stuff, Nirvana, all of the big guys. Yeah. I kind of know them. Um, but it's not something that I necessarily grew up on. I was, I grew up sure. with the, the two thousands, you know, <laughs> cringy pop, um, yeah, <laughs> but right. the good stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I, I always love like dabbling in, in different genres that I wouldn't have otherwise listened to, which is another great yeah. thing about this, this podcast is I, I listen to plenty of different people. Um, I see plenty of different art that I wouldn't have otherwise seen. And it's just like, you know, encourages me yeah. because I'm like, these people are doing what they love and they're in a genre yeah. or they're in a certain, you know, inf- they're influenced by a certain thing, um, that just, yeah you know, keeps them going. So it's just, it's just really cool to see. And I have enjoyed, um, like what I've listened to of, of your EP and I'm excited to see it be remastered. Um, I think it's going to be, it's, it's going to be good. I mean, it's already the, the, the mastering, the mixing mastering of, of your EP is already pretty decent. I mean, I was listening to it with these headphones, which are, I mean, mixing headphones. So, um, yeah, it was great. So, They did yeah. a good job. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We got, we got a couple, you know, local studios around here that do just a phenomenal job. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, should, we were just obviously completely happy with it. So, yeah, absolutely. I, I would be happy with it too, especially, you know, you put it into the hands of people and you're like, all right, we'll see what happens. And right. then it right. comes For out sure. and you're like, okay, this, this is good. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. happy with this. Well, and you know, that's a part too that I'll, that I'll put in there as well. Like that I appreciate about it is, like we put it out there because we really like it. Mm-hmm. You know, we hope other people will like it. We know of, we know some people won't. I mean, that's just, that's, yeah. that's, that's being a, a, a lover of all things music and like the arts. Like there's several things I listen to that I don't necessarily prefer. I can appreciate the, mm-hmm. you know, the musicianship behind it. Um, yeah. But we know that we know that it's, that's not going to be something for everybody. And that's again, like I mentioned at the beginning, what I think is, the beautiful part about you know music is everybody interprets it like their own way which is what you're mm-hmm. supposed to do yeah um, and that's that's why we musicians make music so that you can you know take it whatever way you feel whatever way you need um and absolutely yeah, and so yeah we we obviously welcome welcome all of that yeah that's 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 great um knowing your place knowing that not everyone is going to be down for what you're putting out there and sure. um knowing to stay true to your roots and stay true to what you're influenced by. And obviously, you know, if something, if something new comes along and you're like, Oh, we want to, we want to make this pop song. Yeah. Go for it, dude. Like, yeah, right. (laughs) You know, like you can do whatever you want, especially, especially in the alt rock space. Like nowadays in alt rock, there's like, there's like alt rock, pop, alt rock, alt alternative, such a large, such a large genre. Alternative squared alt rock. (laughs) Um, like there's just so much you can do with it. So, so yeah, there's, there's plenty of room to, to expand and do something different, but it's also like, you know, we love what we do. People, people Mm -hmm. like it. Some people don't, but that's just the way art is. Everyone's going to interpret it differently. So, so yeah, that's, that's awesome. Like, yeah, it's just great. Do you have, do you have plans to, I mean, tour with Milo Bobby, like in the next year or two, like once you get this, this track remastered, we probably won't within the next year. We may look at something after we go to record like a mm-hmm. full length album. Yeah. Um, we might yeah, kind of let sense. this one, you know, get, get scaled and, and uh, you know, get it out there. And, and because really we, with us being so new, we just have, I mean, we only have five songs out there. Like we'd like to get our portfolio built up a little bit more, have a lot more content out there for people to yeah. see and listen yeah. to and kind of really, you know, dr- you know, kind of drive up that, that, um, demand i guess if we mm-hmm. would ever have anything like that um you know like drive that up kind of before we would we would uh consider anything like that i mean we yeah. definitely are are playing some that are out of state like we have a couple of shows in september that are over over in oregon cross state lines um so we're definitely yeah. playing some in town and out of town shows but um as far as a full-fledged um tour that'd probably be something in the future yeah i know uh, everything in your own time. I was just curious to know if y'all yeah, were yeah. what y'all were doing, but that's cool that you're going to be playing some shows in Oregon. Um, yeah. And I think that the plan of, you know, cre- creating something new and then touring after that comes out is yeah. the way to go. That's what all artists do. You know, they yeah, release an album sure. and then they go tour with it. Um, because yeah. every, the audience knows the songs and everyone is just, right. you know, in for it. It's just, 
they've got the loyalty to you already and what you guys are doing now with just you know ramping up getting some pr some publicity um you know like getting your your ep remastered as well as just kind of continue to have a social presence is really just yeah. a good way to stay consistent and sustain your current following and also give give time for people to discover you and to find you um and then enjoy yeah. your next album when it when it comes out so so yeah that's that's awesome man um and then hopefully gas prices will be lower by then man he's <laughs> that always that always helps for a tour right <laughs> yeah man you brought you brought my mood from here, I'll, here. yeah i know i'm sorry <laughs> no dude <laughs> these gas prices are crazy um i don't i don't even i don't get it uh, uh yeah. i start i got a bike and i just started riding around austin a little bit um yeah yeah so, that's the way to do it <laughs> yeah walking a lot you know just getting my cardio in and yeah, that's right you know, trying to you're putting a blindfold on when I go to to get gas. To be honest with you, because I yeah, really don't want to see sure. how much I'm paying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know how much I'm paying. Um, but yeah, so so what's next for for Milo Bybee? I know that you guys are remastering that, but you know what's next for you yeah. guys in the next? I mean, six months. What's what are you guys up to? What, what you and your brother yeah. Wes? And um, I know you're trying to find that that drummer. So how's the process? You know, what's next for you guys? Yeah, process is good. You know, we 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 um we were we've been working with kind of a temporary drummer for a little bit for this last show that we just had this last weekend, and now we're really you know getting getting really focused on 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 the next phase and the next addition to the band, which we think we're in a pretty good spot for that and should yeah. have that you know solidify within the next couple of weeks here, which we're really excited about. And then yeah, um you know getting back onto that regular practice, you know schedule strategically scheduling some shows over the next couple of months you know not not trying to overdo it by any means like i sure. said we have a couple in september um and then yeah maybe maybe add a, a couple additional in there uh before the new year and then then really just focusing on that new content you know like i said uh, not only the songs that we have that aren't on the ep but the new content that i have and, and really excited to get that in front of the guys and and um you know have them go through that same progression of those other songs that i mentioned before um until they are in their are in their final state to then gear up for the new year with uh with potentially a new album in hand and then more to come from that yeah that's it's always about the strategy a lot of yep. a lot of musicians get something together and put it out there and they don't really see much results but it's because it's all about the strategy you can have the best music in the world and nobody sees it because or nobody hears it because it's not strategic and I mean, it's not everybody's thing, right. you know, it, people are wired for their passions and their creativity. You know, they put that out there and you know, the other half of it of the marketing of your music is really, is really where you can make or break the success of an album or EP or even just a single. Um, yeah. so do you guys, do you guys spend a lot of time strategizing your look like, release schedules, your tour dates, your practices? Obviously you guys are trying to get back into a flow of things once you get your drummer, but is that mm -hmm. something that's really important to your band or is it more so just about the creativity? You know, it, it has always been about the creativity, um, mainly because we didn't really know what we were doing, you know, as far as like when to release, how to release, where yeah. to release. Um, so it's been more about like just getting a strategic like schedule down, maybe strategically scheduling when we are playing live. Mm -hmm. um, but now partnering with this label, that's where they're doing a lot of the, the heavy lifting, which is nice, of course, in partnership with us on developing what that release plan looks like yeah. Um, yeah. and developing that that schedule and different channels that, you know, you're, you're sharing in and, um, interviews that you're giving and, and, you know, reviews that we're getting on the new, you know, re re-released EP. Um, so now it's getting a lot more strategic, but that's, I think what we were really looking for in mm -hmm. a label partner. Yeah. Um, because we had, we, we had some interest from some others that we decided not to go with for some of those reasons. Like this was just, this was that right fit. You know, they were the ones that were, that really had that kind of strategic vision that aligned with what we want. Sure. Um, and can now really be kind of the, the driving factor there. So yeah. definitely getting a lot more strategic while we're still really working to constantly enhance ourselves as musicians and enhance our sound and, and develop our sound and, um, just continue to improve creativity creatively as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I like that you're you're taking um, the 
you're taking the the things that you might not be the best at um and you're you know giving that in the hands of someone else um like right, the right. like the release schedule you're focusing on on what you're what you're good at the creativity mm -hmm. um and you're i mean you're giving yourselves time just to just to do what you love so um i'm i'm really happy to hear that and see that um and i i think that it's just I mean, it's something that everyone should think about and consider because doing everything on your own is, is hard, but it's also, you know, financial things. Um, it, sure, maybe somebody sure. likes, maybe somebody likes the, the strategy behind releasing something. A lot of people do, and a lot of people do it themselves. So, so yeah, yeah it's, it's all about, you know, what, what it is for someone else. Um, you know, the, the right. strategy, um, but, but yeah, Tyler, I mean, this has yeah. been, this has been a great talk. It has. Yeah. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it and appreciate you, you having me on and, and wanting to hear our, hear our story. Yeah. And I mean, before, before we sign off and all that, I just want you to, I mean, say any last words, any, any sort of like, you know, words of inspiration or encouragement to the, the person who's listening to this, who has been in a band or who wants to be in a band and ha is sitting on, on, um, you know, originals. Um, what do you say to that person who, who doesn't necessarily see themselves um, making it in the industry because of, you know, all the noise. There's so many different people currently like in the industry and people trying to break into it. So what do you say to yeah. that person who's, who's really grinding and um, cranking singles out, maybe not releasing them just yet, but just, I mean, maybe they have a small following, but what do you say to that person? I think first of all, it's just, you mentioned it in there a little bit, like defining what your expectation is out of your art. Like, are you creating the art to want to get to that level where it can sustain, you know, that, that can be your sole income. That can be your yeah. job. Like if that's what you're aiming towards, I mean, do it, go for it, put out content, you know, get it to a point where you like it. It's as good as it can get. Like yeah. be open to, but be open to that feedback because this is a harsh industry. This is, sure. you know, it, it is, it is that industry where when you get it in the hands of people, they're either going to love it or they hate it. Like we talked about before. And yeah, you know, don't, don't be discouraged because there 100% will be people on both sides of that aisle. Um, uh -huh. And I think it's just, it is first that just this, this just to find what your goal is, what your, what you want out of this. Um, because if you are wanting to get it to a point where, like I said before, I probably would have been super happy if I just had really polished masters and people didn't hear it. Like uh -huh. that was my expectation. I kind of set the bar a little bit, you know, low with no expectations, yeah. but I guess I'll offer that too. Like things happen. Like you just have to continue at it, continue at your craft and trade and, and, you know, polish it and, and, uh, you know, get it to the point where you feel it's a really good product mm -hmm. um, because that's, that's, what's going to, you know, carry you to that level of expectation that you set for yourself. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. Um, creativity is one's part and, uh, the brains of the business is the other and not everybody has both. Some people have both and they just don't know it yet. Um, but right. yeah, I, right. I agree that it is really just all about setting expectations for yourself. Yeah. Um, because at the end of the day, you're your harshest critic. Um, yep. and if you're not able to reach, a certain standard that you maybe haven't set for yourself, but you're, I mean, you're striving towards something that's like big, um, and maybe too big for you to accomplish right now. And you, you know, you got to start with those small accomplishments to yep. eventually end up where, where you want to be. Um, but yeah, setting, setting standards and setting expectations, I think is, is really important. And, um, I, I think that that's, that's a good piece of advice for, for the creator who's, who's, who's yeah. just working, working hard and, and, yeah. and really and passionate. And then one more thing I would throw in there too yeah. is as a, as a don't, you know, um, and we talked about this a little bit too, but when you're setting those goals, don't have them focused around how many streams you get on this platform or how many yeah. followers you get on this social media platform. Don't set sure. your goals by that because that's just such a, such an up and down road where you're going to be disappointed almost on a daily basis. Oh yeah. Um, and, and yeah. If I did that with this discouraging, yeah, if I did that with this brand, I would, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be here doing this podcast right. Um, right. because I haven't seen like the success that I, I, I know there's, there's a lot of like room for growth here with this, with this platform, but yeah. it's like, 
if I would have done it based on that, I would be here right now. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and same with us, like the amount of, you know, like if I just look at a Spotify, you know, streams and how many we've had and compare that to like being able to get signed by an actual label, you know, that mm-hmm. has some backing, like that's not even close to a comparison. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and so I definitely wouldn't use that, use, use those, you know, metrics as a thing that you're, I mean, it's okay to look at them obviously and see what they are and whatnot, but yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely don't use those in like your overall goal setting of where you want to be and get to as a musician. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, that's the name of the game is just doing what you love, continuing to do what you love, even when there's not any direct results from it and see, and reaping the benefits of being patient and consistent. Yep. Yep. And that, and that small wins, like you said, is huge. Like, you know, yeah. if you're setting your, if you're setting your eyes on being, you know, the biggest rock star in the world, like that's a wildly audacious goal that mm-hmm. may or may not happen. Like yeah. have that there, but don't have that be the end all be all. Like what are these you know, short wins li- leading up to something like that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you've got a great head on your shoulders. Um, and <laughs> I know you. that you're, you're in the, the marketing business, so you, you, you get it. Um, and yep. not everybody gets it. So I'm really happy that you had that piece of advice to offer the listeners, yeah. the, the storytellers listening. Um, but yeah, Tyler, Tyler Schlagenhoff. It was, <laughs> it was awesome having <laughs> you on the podcast. Dude, yeah, I, yeah, thank you. I practiced before we started. I obviously, before <laughs> we started, I, I made sure it was the right pronunciation with you, but Man, I'm a goofy guy, and when I saw that last name, I said, "Bro, there's so much room for my impression, yeah. my my German. Is it German? I'm getting. It sounds German. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. As German as it gets. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you said it even. You said it even more appropriately than I usually do. You say it with the actual, you know, German pronunciation. So yeah, the inflections. Yes, that was, exactly. That was great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got it. You got to start introducing. Um, you know, if you're like. Yeah, that we we have been Milo Bobby. I'm Tyler Schlagenhauf, and this is my yeah. brother Wesley Schlagenhauf. <laughs> Just and that's the only part we say in that accent. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, dude, I love German music. I, I don't know if, that. <laughs> dude, do it, bro. I'm I'm big into German music. I have um I have a. A vinyl that I got from Goodwill for like fifty cents. That literally just the title on it says, uh, "German beer drinking music." Um, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and it's just awesome because you need <laughs> right. I just I put that bad boy on, drink some water, and dance around my room like a weirdo. Um, <laughs> no, I see that's what it does. That's what music does. Allows exactly. You to enjoy it in any any way. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, you know, I, I saw something somewhere. I can't remember where it was, but it was just like, you lose the sense of creativity that you had as a kid. Like when you were a kid, you weren't embarrassed to dance. You weren't embarrassed to sing. Oh, no. You weren't embarrassed to, to draw when yeah. you sucked at it. And you know, your parents were like, Oh, that's so good, sweetie. But really it was trash. Um, yeah. but like you, you, you lose that sense of wonder and that sense of, um, just not really having a care in the world as you grow older. So For holding sure. on to that and and taking that into your music and enjoying the music that you listen to is really important. So I mean, just I was talking to Spider Dabrowski um, a, a couple episodes ago, and he took his inspiration from being like 13 years old into his years of Love screenwriting, it. and and yeah, it's it's just important to do in every creative avenue, and oh, and yeah. that's what I'm doing with listening 100%. to some German music. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Yeah. Well, Tyler, it, dude, it was great having you on here. Um, you know, I wish yeah, Wes could have joined us as well just to, you know, have that Schlagenhauf, um, uh, well, <laughs> round us out. Co- yeah, camaraderie. Yeah, round us out a yeah. little bit. Um, <laughs> but maybe maybe after you guys release that next album, we can get you on here again and talk about how yeah. the journey's been um, since, since, the, since we last talked. But but yeah, Tyler, it was awesome having you on here. Any any last words that you have for the storytellers? I know we, we I just said that, but we're gonna do it again. Yeah, I think that's I think that's it. Go you know go go check out our stuff. You know yeah. Check oh, out yeah. our our website. You know Instagram or Facebook. Leave us a message. Like say hi. Reach out. Um, you know I think that's the best thing about social media that's kind of underused is you know mm-hmm. normally we're checking out what everyone else is doing, but actually connecting with people and talking with one another and sharing their their work with us. Like we would love to see that. Um, yeah. So yeah, just, just connect with us in one of those ways. Yeah. Milo Bobby dot Milo Bobby.com uh, is our website. You won't, 
you won't get rerouted to like any weird finger stake page or anything. That's actually our website. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Trying to get a domain name that's based off yeah. of finger stakes and someone else's name. And, and our band pops up first on Google not Milo Bobby himself. So we're pretty proud of that. Guys, you made, you made it. You got, you guys right. took his That's name. Took. You took his name and you became yeah. bigger than him. Yeah. We might, we might get a cease and desist letter at some point in the, in yeah, the future, I was going to say you better, not. better watch out for that, for those copyrights yeah. and trademarks and all those claims. Um, but okay. yeah, Tyler, it was a pleasure. Um, enjoy your finger stakes over in Boise, Idaho. Um, thank you for coming on here, everybody. I'm going to be linking, um, Milo Bybee's Instagram and Facebook, um, handles in the description as well as their, um, website and a link to their Spotify. So you guys can go listen to, um, their, their EP that released last year. Um, you know, give it a listen, reach out to them, you know, suggestions, just comments, you know, whatever you have for, for Milo Bybee. Um, obviously you heard it here that he loves to hear, or the, the boys, Tyler, Wes, and, and their new drummer, mystery drummer that we'll find out soon enough. Um, right. you guys Stay will, tuned. you guys will just be able to communicate with them and, and, you know, just, just say what's up. Cause that's, that's at the end of the day, what you want to hear from the people who listen to you. So yeah, Tyler, again, it was a pleasure. Um, Thanks for coming on. Storytellers, we'll be back on in a couple weeks um, to hear from somebody new. You will you don't even know who they are yet. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to, to, to have you on here, Tyler. Thank you so much. And storytellers, keep on telling your story, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>